<laughs> okay, so in this video, we're gonna cover one of my all-time favorite algorithms. It's Tut's algorithm for drawing graphs in the plane. It's also called like spring embeddings of a graph in the plane, and, or as Tut called it, it's just uh, how to draw a graph. All right, so here is the starting question. It is the following. I want to make not just a nice, not just a nice linear embedding of my planar graph, but I want to embed it so that every face is a convex polygon. This is called a convex embedding. If we uh, look here, uh, this is not always clear when we have this. You see, in this case, this is good and this one is not. Okay, so just look, every face has to be a convex polygon. This one right here, not convex. So the whole embedding is not a convex uh, embedding. All right, so how do we find an embedding in which every face is a nice convex polygon? And so one, one cool idea is you just put every vertex at the centroid of its neighbors. And the reason you might think this is a good idea is that if all the edges were springs, you might hope that it unwraps itself. Like when you, when you uh, maybe look at a, a graph and try to figure out if it's planar, oftentimes we intuitively kind of pull the graph out and you know pull each vertex near its neighbors. Um, but something goes terribly wrong if you do this because um, you see like of all the edges are pulling, 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 pulling on each other, the net forces will all be coming in. And eventually the whole thing will just collapse to a point. So this spring idea um, in its simplest form doesn't work. I mean, you can find an example where um, it, it, it sort of satisfies the usual physics equations for springs, but it will put all the vertices exactly on top of each other. Um, so we need a new idea. And so here's the, here's the slightly better idea. If you pin down the outer face, so you take one face and you say, this is gonna be my outer face, and you put those on a circle. Okay, so I decide that on this circle, I'm gonna put my outer face, and those are not gonna move. All the other edges, so here's my outer face, all the other edges are springs, and I'll let them pull as much as they want and see where everything settles. Now, Hooke's Law, which describes how forces uh, are exerted by springs, it says that the force of a spring is gonna be proportional to its length, right? Force is equal to spring constant times the displacement, which is like, well, it's just the length here. So in this case, if I look at V0, it's got these edges coming out. And if the, this is the position of those vertices in my drawing, then the net force on V, well, this is gonna give you memories, hopefully, of your high school physics class. This is just a kind of free body diagram. I'm just gonna add up these vectors. So I'm gonna add up for each one of these neighbors. Um, there's gonna be some vector, which is uh, let's draw it. I guess I'm going to have to draw it like these are actually pushing. Maybe I'll make them pull. So let's do this right. So this is uh, V I minus V zero. Right? So each one pulls with a vector equal to its length. Um, and the spring constants are all one. Okay. Now this, uh, this should look familiar. Right, this is exactly what the kind of expression we saw where we summed up all over all the neighbors of every vertex of the difference of that vertex with its neighbors. It's the minus of what we got when we took the Laplacian. All right, so this is, um, this is uh, where Laplacians sneak back in. So if I take the positions of all my points and you think of this as a vector like our n by 2, right? So it's like n rows, two columns, and the, 
the two columns are the x and y coordinates of all the points, or all the vertices in the plane, then what I get here is that uh, this ith component of LP is, um, I should be careful, like technically this is minus this. Um, it's the sum over all the vertices adjacent to I of PJ minus PI. Right? This is the net force. And this might at first look a little weird because um, when we did this previously, we had, this was a potential, it was just uh, one column, and now we have two columns. And it turns out this is just 100% fine. Um, nothing is changed. Um, it's just that now I have a difference of vectors here rather than just uh, number, real numbers. Right, so I've taken that that Laplacian system problem and I've lifted it up into 2D. And now you'll see that pinning down the outer face is very much equivalent to the case where we put in a, a battery and fix some voltage, right? We actually fixed where the positions of the outer vertices will be in that outer face, and we're just going to solve for the inner vertices. So you solve this sub-Laplacian system for the inner vertices. All right, and this is this now we know how to do. We know how to solve this system. Um, if I were to write it out in a little bit more detail, right, we have a graph, and that graph gets broken up into the outer faces. So the first indices are the outer faces, and then the rest are the other vertices. We can call those the inner vertices. And we multiply it by the positions now. So this is the positions, or if you like, this is actually the drawing. And what we get is the net force. The net force. And we can think of that net force again as being broken up into two parts. The net force having the whatever the net force on the outside is which we don't care about and the net force on the inside where we would like everything inside at least to balance out the net forces should be zero that's what we would call static equilibrium all right and now we know if we give these things names we know how to solve for those points. Uh, we did this previously. This would just be taking uh, L1 times P inner, which is going to be equal to minus Q times P outer. Um, did I get that right? I think so. Right, so I just took this to be equal to zero and I moved this to the other side. And this is my one sub-Laplacian system that I need to solve. And we know that for connected graphs, in this case, we actually had to have a three-connected planar graph. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, it, but since it's connected, there's an inverse here. And so I can actually get my final solution just by inverting one matrix and solving. So P inner is just equal to um, negative L1 inverse Q times the positions of the outer vertices. So there it is. Um, and so that just gives us directly a, um, a drawing in which all the vertices on the inside are placed at um, the centroid or average of their neighbors because that's exactly the point where all the springs balance out and the forces are in equilibrium. Here is uh, some code I wrote. It's not too bad, hopefully. So this is an implementation of Tots algorithm, and there's some things that you're not going to be able to see here. In particular, all the code I used to draw the pictures when we see them, but also how, where I even got the graphs from. But uh, I think it's enough to see the algorithm in in um, 
in action. And also maybe you might learn a couple things about using NumPy here. So here's the idea. Uh, it, it starts with, well, I, I had to write a little function here to generate uh, endpoints on a circle. And I guess this N is not going to be our N. Well, it's however many points are going to be on the outer face. So I think, uh, let's start with a small, well, who cares? Maybe we'll do like 80 vertices. That sounds pretty good. And I have a function. I'm not going to show you this function, but it gives me a nice, pretty nice graph. Let's say it's a planar three connected graph. Usually, sometimes it gives me one that's not three connected and uh, um, things go terribly wrong, but it does a pretty good job of that. And it will also tell me one face. So it'll give me the outer face. That's It'll tell me the indices of the vertices that are the outer face. It won't necessarily rearrange it so those are the first ones, but that's not so bad. Um, so the first step here is after I um, have a graph, I'm going to pick out, make a list of all the vertices that are the inner vertices. It's sort of like everything not in the outer face. All right, so that's my inner list. And then um, I compute the Laplacian. And uh, that's just um, as we did before. L1 is the slice, uh, you know, that submatrix where I just take um, the vertices corresponding to the interface. Uh, the, there's the rows and columns. Okay, so that's my L1. Q, remember, was the rows from the inner uh, face. Is that right? Yes, from the, and the columns from the outer face, and uh, and then I just invert L1. So I'm going to use the num np dot linal dot inv. Right, this is a way to invert a matrix. Okay, so once I do that, now I need to figure out where my vertices are. So I just populate a big empty matrix of zeros. Um, I go through my, I make a bunch of points on a circle, and uh, then for each index and the corresponding vertex in the outer face, um, I'm going to make the point for that vertex, PV, be the, that circle, the ith circle point. So as I go around, whatever those indices are, I'm going to make them circle points on a circle in that order. This is me just putting down the outer face in order. And then uh, this is uh, something, if you haven't seen this before, this is a little bit wild. This is me assigning into a slice. So I've got P inner. Of course, inner is an entire list. It's a list of indices, but it'll do the right thing. It'll assign um, the right-hand side, which is a vector of length equal to inner. Of, of uh, It'll be, I guess, if there's like uh, K points in the interior, this will be a K by 2 array. And so it'll assign it correctly into P this way. And it's just negative L1 inverse times Q times P on the outer face. So that is the positions of the points on the outer face, which we just assigned to be on a circle. Okay, and the last part is just to draw a picture. Creates a canvas and a um, little thing here. Let's, let's run it. I think it works. Um, I tried to do this one live and it went very badly. That's why I've given you the, the cooked one here. Uh, so let's try it. What do I get? Oh, yes, there we go. So I got this nice picture. Um, can I get it onto the screen, though? Let's see. Let me uh, see how I can... <laughs> it scrolled off the screen. I'm going to, like, pull this whole thing up. Let's try that. All right, so that's an example, right? That runs. That's uh, That's just putting the points on the outer face. All the other edges become springs. Solving the linear system puts every other vertex at the centroid of its neighbors. And it gets a really kind of a nice drawing. Shall we make some more? Let's try another one. Um, so should we try a big one? I think we should do at least one really big one. Well, what's really big? Let's say, I don't know what will happen if I do this, but I'm going to try this. Oh, yeah. So um, this drawing, if you look at it, um, there's some really like fine detail in there we'd have to zoom in pretty close to see but actually it turns out that there are no crossings this draw this algorithm gives it an embedding not just a drawing and uh it's in fact a convex embedding so all these faces are convex polygons 
all of these faces are triangles, so that's not impressive right now. Um, but if, <laughs> if I had a planar three-connected graph with faces that were not all triangles, um, even then all the faces would be convex. Okay, so that's, um, that's Tut's algorithm in action.